Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and several other topics of environment. So in this session, we are going to learn about a very interesting theory that's called thermal convection current theory. Now why are we going to learn about this? Because this theory is one of the important pivots in geographical history that changed the course of thinking of the geomorphologists and earth scientists because of its important things that were related to the internal structure of the earth and how it is associated to the landforms, importantly mountain building. So before this theory propounded in 1928-29 by Sir Arthur Holmes, there were lots of scholars right from 1850s onwards who talked about various concepts that could actually tell us about the formation of various landforms on earth right from the theories of isostasy that we have learned in the previous lectures as well right from the concept of airy pratt and several others also importantly we talked about lothian green's tetrahedral hypothesis then division model of cycle of erosion and also importantly taylor and wegener's hypothesis of continental drift up till 1915 but remember before this convectional current theory came to being other theories were almost criticized for not being aptly relevant for the explanation of the origin of mountains and volcanoes on Earth's surface. So convection current theory gave the best scientific understanding which was different from the previous theories. For example, before this, the latest theory which was acceptable in larger scientific community was Wegener's theory. But remember, Wegener's theory was highly criticized because he gave this theory but could not explain it. The reasons were supposed to be related to tidal hypothesis or it was related to pole fleeing force which was criticized. So convectional current theory of Sir Arthur Holmes becomes one of the most important theory in understanding this mechanism of isostatic adjustment as well as at the same time also understanding about the formation of various mountain chains across the globe and also later on when in 1960s Harry Hess propounded the theory of seafloor spreading and later on Morgan and Pitcher, Tuzo Wilson, all these scholars came for plate tectonics. Remember that was the time when this theory got its validation again. Right? So that's why we must understand convection current theory. So now, before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also share the videos with others as well. So after this music, we'll be right on the theory. So now let's learn about thermal convection current theory by Sir Arthur Holmes. Now why is it important? Because Arthur Holmes was the first earth scientist to grasp the mechanical and thermal implications of mantle convection. Now remember the relationship between the crust and the mantle was very much important right from 1850s from the concept of Arian Pratt as we have already learned in the previous lectures as well right. So what happened just before this was that Alfred Wegener proposed finally the concept that we know by the name of continental drift theory. But what happened? He could not explain it and it was highly criticized because he said that these movement of continents were actually triggered by tidal forces. It means gravitational pull of sun and moon. But remember these large chunks or large building blocks of the earth that is crustal lithospheric blocks could not be moved right by just tidal force. So it was not accepted as well as this full fleeing force was also highly criticized. So there was a void in the knowledge in terms of the exact knowledge that how these mountains are created, how volcanism happens. So that is the time when Arthur Holmes postulated his thermal convection current theory which was talking about majorly the origin of these relief features on Earth's surface. Right? So that's why it acquired or it got the importance because there was a void in the knowledge of these geomorphic expression on Earth's surface. So now let's elaborate further more. So Arthur Holmes talked about the driving force of mountain building. Now what is this driving force? It's very important to understand that the Earth's interior 
gives this driving impetus or driving force. So Arthur Holmes said that thermal convection currents originating deep within the earth are the driving forces for the surface mountain building that we observe, right? So he talked that main source of the origin of convective currents is excessive heat in the substratum. Now the word here is substratum. Substratum is below the strata of the crust that is in the asthenosphere which is partially molten as we have already learned in the internal structure. So if you have not watched the videos on internal structure and isostasy, I would suggest do watch that video to get more clarity on this particular topic. So in fact the whole theory depends exclusively on the mechanism of thermal convective currents. That's very much important. Now here is important that he discussed three different layers in the earth where different convective zones are present. So according to Holmes, the earth consists of three zones or three layers and namely upper layer is made of granodiorite that is up to 10 to 12 kilometer. Intermediate layer is 20 to 25 kilometer made of amphibolite and lower layer of ecologite. So this was the stratification presented by Arthur Holmes. Now if you observe this particular graph, it's saying silica content here, right? And here is the percentage of mineral by volume. So if you look at this geological graph for that matter, it says that maximum silica content but minimum in terms of availability. So amphiboles are minimum in terms of availability but maximum are here in terms of silica content. Same is olivine and pyroxene. What happens here? Silica content is lesser and lesser as you go away right here. But what happens? Their presence is more than what is amphibole. So if you can pause the video here and look into this particular diagram, you'll understand what that these intrusive and extrusive form of rocks and minerals have particular volume and also silica content depending upon in which layer they are formed by which particular process of thermal convection they originate. That's important here. So what is the difference between granite and granodiorite? Now it's important here to discuss these three layers as Holmes said. So granite contains mostly of potassium feldspar and has low percentage of dark iron and magnesium minerals. But at the same time, if you look into this granodiorite, it is darker. Remember, it has more plagioclase feldspar that is calcium and sodium content and it also has darker minerals. That's important. So granodiorite, the first layer as he said, then amphibolite, which was intermediate layer as he talked. So amphibolite is basically what? Rock of convergent plate boundaries. It's very important to understand where two plate boundaries converge. There this is majorly formed where heat and pressure cause regional metamorphism. So amphibolite is the resultant of regional metamorphism, the intermediate layer where one layer goes subduction and there it forms when magma originates. So that is where this important metamorphism takes place and mafic igneous rocks such as basalt and gabbro goes under this metamorphism to form amphibolite or metamorphism of clay rich sedimentary rocks as well like marl or greywick also form this particular amphibolite that is the intermediate layer. Now comes to the lower layer of eclogite. Now what is this eclogite? Eclogite is a metamorphic rock formed when mafic igneous rocks are subjected to very high pressure. Obviously because it is under influence of so much of pressure from the above layers. That's why it is important to understand that it's under high pressure. So eclogite forms at pressure greater than those typical of the crust and they are unusually dense rocks. Eclogite can play an important role in driving convection within the solid earth. That's why it is important. So this is the three layer stratification which was talked by Arthur Holmes that these are the layers after which he said that these layers and these particular kind of rocks are formed because of particular kind of thermal convection. So let's elaborate and see. Then further he has grouped these particular rocks into three layers in or maybe you can say two particular zones. One is the crustal zone and one is the mental zone. So three layers are crust consisting of upper and middle or intermediate layers and crystalline upper part of lower layer. Substratum that is representing molten part of lower layer and crust and substratum are composed of Cial and Sima. Remember this Edward Suez hypothesis classification of Cial Sima Nife. So if you look into this image what you observe this is the crustal part this particular part right and here is the mantle part in which crust subducts at particular places and also it also goes away from 
each other at certain places. So where crust moves towards each other and crust goes away from each other as we have already learned in plate tectonics in details as well, right? So this is because some place convection current are divergent, some place convection current are convergent and this is the main reason because of which you have trenches here, then you have certain places volcanism here, then you have mid oceanic ridges here. So these are the surface expressions which was given in terms of the explanation through this particular theory of convection current. Now the convection current depends on two factors. Now factors important here is the thickness of the crust near equator and the poles and uneven distribution of radioactive elements in the crust. Now remember radioactive elements are the prime source of energy as well. So ascending that is going upward convective current originate under crust near the equator because of greater thickness of crust. Now it's important that where thickness of crust is greater it means material is coming upward and it is solidifying this was the important part of the theory while at the same time where crust is going downwards it is descending it means descending convection currents are originating under polar crust because of shallower depth so equatorial region and polar region were also explained like this and if you can observe here so this is where you have accent that is going upward and diverging force while at the same time there is something called convergent plate boundary right so magma generation is here and escaping of heat from the mantle is towards upward so this is what actually changes the entire scenario of or the geomorphic expression of the earth's surface right that's important to remember now there are two situations of rising convective currents here one and two. So the crustal mass where two rising convective currents diverge in opposite directions, it is stretched and thinned. Now if it is diverging in two directions, so it is stretching and it is thinner portion here, right? Thus divergent convective currents cause continental drifts which was you know explained using this theory. So now continental drift explanation comes through convection current theory 1929 and when two lateral convective currents originate under continental and oceanic crust that is converge so compressive force is generated that causes subsidence. Now here is important point to remember that subsidence in the crustal zones give birth to geosynclines. Now remember geosynclinal theory we have also studied in details so geosynclines and closing of seas so if you observe carefully these two images one is where accent current is here here is thin crust right while it is here going towards each other it is moving downwards so convergence is here and what happens here descending current right and when descending current is there there can be a depression formed as well and geosynclines can form so that is important to remember now looking into this particular geosynclinal hypothesis and stages that we have already done so look here here is this particular expression where the convection current is going in descent it is going downwards so this is where depression is created like geosyncline between these two crustal blocks right in the second stage here the geosynclines actually gets folding because pressure from this side and pressure from this side goes here so it starts to fold so here you have fold mountains right so folding ranges this is how in different stages geosynclines sedimentation orogenesis and rise of mountains that we know by the name of glyptogenesis remember Kober's work so glyptogenesis has been discussed in this particular theory by validating it through convection current so convection current inside the earth results into these mountain building ridges and also volcanism at the same time. So according to Holmes, the cyclic pattern of convective currents and related mountain buildings pass through three phases of or stages if you see which is given in this diagram. So you can pause the video here and you can draw this diagram for yourself as well for the greater explanation. Now when this theory gets more validation coming in 1929 this theory got more validation right in 1960s why because here the scholar called Harry Hess the great oceanographer he actually propounded the concept of seaflow spreading now look into this image magma comes upward and here 
it goes this side and this side and this is where new crust is formed and here is the mid oceanic ridge right so this was the important aspect that actually proved that he was right arthur holmes was right in 1929 by saying that these ridges rise here trenches are formed somewhere mountains are formed on earth's surface because of convectional current so thermal convectional current theory got its validation after harry hess propounded the theory of seafloor spreading and later on plate tectonic theory clarified the entire scenario so now we know why arthur holmes thermal convection current theory of 1928-29 is important in terms of geomorphological concept so now when we have discussed in details about the thermal convection current theory of sir arthur holmes in this video in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on several such grand theories in geomorphology which are very much important in understanding the mechanism of geomorphic expressions landforms on earth surface so if you have not subscribed to our channel do subscribe and also share the videos with others stay safe stay tuned best wishes